So if somebody has that instinct and that intuition that says they need to go out and take a chance, they just feel it. Do you have any helpful hints or tricks? Practice. Um, and how do you practice intuition? You practice intuition by not shutting it down. Meaning, all of you feel something when you meet somebody or you see something. Take a look, like think, it's practice. I'm telling you, it's like meditating, playing tennis. It's like you practice kindness. How do you practice kindness? When you see somebody in the street who's a stranger and you actually like their hoodie, instead of just saying it to yourself, be like, yo, nice hoodie, bro. That's called practicing kindness. Attention is the number one asset. We're starting off season two with the Big Fish Cares podcast with a bang, like a real bang, like a big bang. Like a big bang theory? Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V. I don't think he needs an introduction. Uh, I think everyone knows who he is, at least people that probably follow me. So we're going to get right into it. Thanks again for this opportunity. I know I... You traded for it. I know I traded for you it. You did a flip. I, I know. I, I appreciate you. It's I, great to see you. I'm glad you're here. I wanted uh, I wanted the experiences. Man, you've taught me that over the last 10 years that experiences. Monsters. The stuff is cool. Experiences 100%. are like 100x. It, by the way, for everybody, you can turn the podcast off right now. If you could just actually hear that and then live it, this was the best podcast you ever lived, uh, listened to, excuse me, because... It's very true, my brother. But let's get into it. I know we have a lot of time. Yeah, and I, uh, I was just talking to Gary before the episode started about uh, my journey over the last three years and uh, about how I'm trying to harness this energy. And I listened to two podcasts that you did um, over this past year. The one was Stephen Bartlett, uh, The Diary of a CEO, which was an amazing. That was my probably my favorite podcast that you've ever done. Yeah, it was a good one. The way he interviews is really good. Um, but the stories that I got out of you, the, the more in depth I got to learn about you, um, your mom, you yes. know, and I, I, I've gotten pieces of your mom from being in the V Friends community yep. and speaking in little satellite events. I've been hearing some stuff about mom. I'm now starting to understand why you're so special. Because I, I was like, man, like, how does he do all this stuff and how is he so happy all the time? And it's because of his mom. 100%. Uh, and then also then the, the podcast that you did with your fiance, Mona and Chloe, and uh, you guys talked about some interesting stuff on that podcast yes. uh, with intuition, yep. energy, and so I want to kind of dive a little bit deeper on that. So um, let's, so let's start with your mom, right? So your, your mom's had such a big impact on your life. And from now, for, like, I want to make a, a hypothesis. I think that because of your mother's love and compassion for you and how she she uh, rewarded kindness and like I, I heard like parts like where you're like you didn't do that well in school that's it's right. no secret I didn't yeah. do that well in school yeah. either I got in trouble a lot because I you know lots of lots of different lots of different reasons what are you looking for <laughs> when you see it up close and personal it's pretty bad but go ahead all right so but I thought that was so cool when you said that and so now fast forward to you know, thirty-five-year-old Gary, and he's making an impact on all these young entrepreneurs, all these content creators. Yep, entrepreneurs, content yep. creators. That's like the yep. That's the core. And you're speaking life into them, and you're believing in them. And like, I didn't know you personally for the first yep. eight years. I yep. followed you. Yep. But that little bug in my ear really made an impact on someone believing in me because, like, yeah, my mom was around, and I had a good mom. It was just a different kind of love, right? I get it. And your mom's got this, I don't know, this feminine energy that she's instilled in you. And then you instill that in all these people around the world. And the impact that you're making right now is like still just like this on the grand scope of things. So my first question is, is like, how do you perceive the ripple effect of your influence on entrepreneurs like now and then forecasting that into the future? I think now it's noticeable. You know, I don't think it's, you know, a secret. Like, the reality is is that I've effectively communicated at scale now for a decade, 15 years or so. And we now have a generation of 22, 23, 33-year-olds who really grew up with Gary Vee being out there, right? And so I think there's an impact now. I know that because I get an outrageous amount of email and DMs and, I mean, it's inconceivable for me to be out in public and not have someone come up to me and say something nice about the impact I've had. You know, that's, I'm not really even out in public that much. I'm in the office a lot and with family a lot. So like, you know, I'm aware it's there. I'm flattered. And I think long term, I don't plan on stopping. 
And I think V Friends, ironically, is like the 2.0 version. I know that I'm not everyone's cup of tea. I know I'm only one human being. I can't get to everyone. And so I think the thing that's really interesting about Entrepreneurial Elf or Creative Crab or you know Gary B or Empathy Elephant is I'm really going for it. Like the last you know 20 years, 15 years, 10 years has been about how much can I literally out of the sheer will of a human accomplish in changing the narrative of success, having different conversations with entrepreneurs and humans that have ambition. And now I have a whole universe of Marvel, Pokemon, Disney, Sesame Street-like characters that I have to develop over the next multiple decades. And if I'm right, I can have a massive impact. Um, and I'm, I think Star Wars had a big impact on me. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I haven't said this publicly, so I'm giving you some scoops here, Fish. I want you to have some good stuff. <laughs> I think Star Wars, when I was like 30, 25, I was able to rewind and say, fuck, no wonder I was so attracted to Star Wars. It's the story of life. It is that there's good and there's evil, and they're kind of actually close in energy, but good by the tip of its nose will outpace bad. Hmm. You know, because fucking the dark side's rough. The emperor's a beast. It's not like Yoda can beat the emperor so easily. And, and I think that that's the impact. And so when I saw that, Bless you, Dustin. When I able, when I, at 30 or 35, when things about good and evil and positive and negative, all these psychological things became interesting to me, I was able to rewind why I was so attracted to those characters and stories and what did Han Solo or Chewbacca or Yoda or the Emperor Greedo even, who made a quick appearance, mean to me. That is my ambition for V Friends. I want a 50-year-old in, in 70 years to be like, oh, crap. No wonder I'm so accountable. Accountable Ant was my favorite character as a kid, mm. and I learned quickly that accountability was the quickest path to happiness, and blaming and pointing fingers was the reverse. And I believe today, for example, a shocking amount of humans in America and around the world, but in America, there's a direct correlation to their unhappiness on their ability to blame everyone, the president, governments, bosses, their parents, and their capacity of blame is what's leading to their unhappiness. And that comes from? Culture, right? It comes from politicians, it comes from television, it comes from social media, it comes from mainstream media, it comes from what is popular in culture. When I started first talking about hustle in 2008 because the economy was bad, I was revered for making people happy that they were in control and if they grinded it, they could win. Eight years later, when the world was fluffy and overflown with cash, I was demonized because people converted that term into slang of burnout. Mm. Now I can use hustle again instead of hard work because we're now getting, I mean, like a year ago, I'm like, wait a minute, people are saying this in a good way again. There's always a temperament, right? You know, pilots were the most famous people in America in 1960. Nobody even thinks, nobody even knows one pilot by name in America today. Yeah, pilots and astronauts. That's right. I think I heard that on one of those podcasts. Yeah, I mean, uh, major athletes, I'm talking in the Hall of Fame of baseball and football had summer jobs because they didn't get paid enough being professional athletes and they would work in a hardware store in the Bronx. This is real. Yeah. New York Yankees in the 50s worked in Hoboken at a hardware retail store during the off season because it didn't pay enough. <laughs> like Things change. And so to answer your question, what's, what's happened now is we've created entitlement because we're an empire in first world countries around the world. And we haven't had a world war in a long time. And we're worrying about churchary things, not primary things. We're not worried about roof over our heads. We're worried that we don't have a Mercedes. And when we don't have a Mercedes, we blame someone that we don't, because we don't want to, we're really bad at being accountable. This is why accountable ant gets so much love for me when I use examples. I want to know, you have such, you know, you're, I remember you in the early days, right? A lot of energy, right? Yeah. You have, you remind me, I'm like myself, yeah, yeah. like you have you a, know, lot a lot yep. of energy. Yep. How have you, how have you harnessed that energy and like through the years, um, become more calm clam? <laughs> like, and that's a V friends. Yeah. I, I think that I still have the same basic energy. I'm just empathetic that the temperament of our society was demonizing energy as something negative and I just decided to take, that was a thoughtful, not even a subconscious, that was a thoughtful decision that, oh, people are not hearing me. 
that's on me. Back to accountability. Mm. When people are like, Gary, you just care about money. I'm like, okay, I'm not doing a good job. If someone believes that, I'm not doing a good job. So I consciously have you know, changed up energy in certain scenarios to make sure my point is not being lost because I'm trying to bring value. And if you dismiss me because you think I'm a Jersey you know, street kid and you're a academic mm-hmm. and you dismiss me, well, then I can't achieve the good that I want to give you. I'm not hurt by it. I'm not disrespected. I'm not miffed. I'm not insecure about it. I just have a mission and I'm enjoying my mission and why, do I, why would I have the audacity to say, oh, fuck you, you don't get me? And no, it's the reverse. I have the humility, like a hedgehog, to say, wait a minute, I need to mix this up. And then also, the things that I talk about change as I become more educated of what the issue is. I didn't realize 10 years ago how much insecurity was stopping people from doing the things I was telling them were so easy to do to grow their thing. Because you grew up in such an environment. Where that wasn't my issue. Correct. I'm like, it never dawned on me in 2006 that the reason somebody would not start a YouTube channel was because they were worried about somebody saying they're ugly. But by 2015 and 20, with my popularity and getting all my DMs, I started reading the temperature of the world. And I'm like, oh, these people buy these jewelry not because they just want the jewelry because that makes them look successful and they're trying to prove to everyone they're successful because they grew up not feeling successful. I just got done interviewing uh, Robin Hood, yes. the artist, yes. our buddy. Yeah. And you know he grew up with a t- dad that was really tough on yeah. him and called him fat fuck and, yeah. like, and like was really mean. And, yeah. But that's also driven him to go to the gym now. Of course. But he still just told me just like an hour ago of bike. Like that still sits with them. That of insecurity. That, ins- that insecurity. That's right. That's right. So the people that don't grow up with moms like you, yes. Do you, do you have any advice on how to get there? Get, get, yeah. Get there. Get there. A ton. Li- get there a little faster. Well, no, nope, that <laughs> word scares me. The faster part is why I think people don't get there. You know, I have a father who grew up with a totally different mother, and I was very affected by that father. So okay. I've been thinking about this shit my whole life. I'm not, by the way, just so everybody understands when, they, when I talk about my mom, I hope everybody understands. I didn't grow up in a fairy land. I had a lot of things. I had a very different dad who, had, you know, who I have a great relationship with, but there was, a, there was 25 years of work to get to where we are today. Uh, and that's me being a grown up at 22 to today. I grew up being the oldest child of an immigrant family. I was told from day one, you take care of everything. Mm. Do you know how many things That's I not fucked fair up? To in? A kid. Of course. Do you know how many things I fucked up in my life because I'm always taking care of everything? Mm. So I have no angst towards my parents. It's a big, you know this. My big theme at VCon this year was fuck your grandparents. Yeah. Right? Which is not fuck your grandparents. <laughs> right. I love people's grandparents. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying if you're going to be mad at your mom or your dad, well, don't you know that they had a mom and dad that made them the way they are? Yeah. I mean, so if you're going to be like, my parents fucked me up, so fuck my parents, well, no, 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 no. You need to be mad at your grandparents because they fucked up your parents and shouldn't go there. And by the way, I don't know if you've heard, there's something called great grandparents. Yeah. And like, so. It goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. Correct. You believe in the Bible, so, right? Like, you know, so these are things I think about constantly. And of course, there's gifts and curses that came along with being a human. I just think we're spending way too much time right now on the curses. I think we need to be more grateful and optimistic. The other thing that you talk about your mom is that she's. That she's giving you the gift of intuition. Yep. And I have a bunch of questions on intuition. Okay. Like, first off, like, do you think that? Do you think everyone has intuition? I think everyone has intuition. I don't think people. I think there's levels to it. I think everybody can play basketball. Like I don't know. Like all four of us in the room right now could go outside right now and play basketball. Yeah. My intuition on that is we will not look like the New York Knicks that play at Madison Square Garden, no matter how bad of a basketball team they are. They are dramatically better than the four of us. I think a lot of people have been told not to believe in intuition, which means they haven't practiced intuition. I think a lot of people are scared to get hurt so they don't go under intuition because when they have in the past, somebody hurt them and they're scared to get hurt again. Um, I think there's a lot that goes into intuition, but for me, intuition is everything. Now, you were blessed with like that, that mother again, so like your intuition's probably off to a little bit faster of a start. Well, I, think, I, think a there's start. A, I think there's a direct correlation to intuition and self-esteem. Okay. So I think it takes risk to follow your intuition. And I think if you're not scared that somebody can hurt you because you have your own self-esteem, you'll practice intuition more. 
I also don't worry about the money as an entrepreneur, so I'm, I'm okay with losing it. I can tell. How much is the rent here, by the way? Too much. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Midwest guy. Tons, I'm a Midwest guy. So when I came into the Big Apple in the New York City, and then they told me I have the whole floor, and I walked around, saw all the glass. I'm like, yeah, all these views are like billion-dollar views. Like, I can't even imagine what the rent costs. And I saw the EBITDA shirt last night, and, and, and like me and you run our business is very similar. Like, my EBITDA sucks. Yeah. I'm, because I'm, I'm always invested in correct. the culture, right? And that's and, like, right. People, and people, by the way, this is a very meta conversation. I've met a lot of Benny. I've met thousands of high energy dudes that like are going on the offense with me and 99% of them I don't build any form of a relationship with because my intuition's like, "Mm, this doesn't have the right intent Hmm. or this is just transactional. True, transactional. You know what I mean? Commission breath. It's got commission breath. Yeah. Yeah, and so with you, I'm just like, you know what? I bet you a lot of people see this kid as like, eh, but I see this kid as yeah. And so here we are today. Oh, and I gave you a big stack of V Friends cards. No, that's today to here, but you would have never been able to even give me those V Friends mm. cards if I didn't make those four to five decisions on the other times I saw you. Yeah, that's you would have, true. We would have not, you, like, you, you could have given, there are people who can give me the V Friends. <laughs> like, everything. Like, the human four, there are people who can give me a five million dollars to have a relationship with. I wouldn't even comprehend it. I'm really appreciative of it. I have a lot of I have a lot of gratitude for it because it is uh, it's awesome when someone believes in you, especially like when you and then they actually meet that person and then it's actually happening and it's actually working and it's like wow and then that just builds momentum. Yeah. And then there's this ripple effect well, that, that I kind part, of started at the that thing. part. And it's like now it's that's infecting all my people. It's going to affect my kids. Of course it it's is. going to affect all my relationships. Of because I struggled with relationships for many years. Of course. Because I didn't know I, I, it was it was clanky. It was clanky. Until you love yourself, you can't love anyone else. Until you trust yourself, you can't trust anyone else. Until you're comfortable with making mistakes with yourself, you can't be comfortable with others making mistakes. The you- number one reason I have so much compassion for everyone else is I have compassion for myself. I'm a human. I'm not a superhero. I'll make mistakes. Yeah. Wow. I'm trying not to. I prefer not to. Are you? Because at the end of the day, like, isn't one of the theories like, hey, fail fast and like, you well, know. Like- no, no, that, that is a slang term for are you willing to take a chance knowing it may not work out, but you still, per- like every one of my chances, I prefer to work, but I'll take the booby prize of learning. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas other people, I think, are so scared that if it doesn't work, that it completely represents their entire self-esteem that they don't even try. Because why would you risk hurting yourself so much? So if somebody has that instinct and that intuition that says they need to go out and take a chance, right? They're listening to Gary. They're seeing what they, he's got to say. They just feel it. How Do you have any helpful hints or tricks? Practice. Um, how, and how do you practice intuition? You practice intuition by not shutting it down. Meaning all of you feel something when you meet somebody or you see something. Take a, take, take a look. Like, think. It's practice. I'm telling you, it's like meditating. It's like playing tennis. It's like you practice kindness. How do you practice kindness, Gary? I don't know. When you see somebody in the street who's a stranger and you actually like their hoodie, instead of just saying it to yourself, be like, yo, nice hoodie, bro. That's called practicing kindness. Uh, the next time you have a quick second of, I like this person, but then all the things your mom and dad and you taught yourself, are like, no, 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 they're gonna hurt me. Well, just remember for a quick second, remember that nanosecond before you went to your normal state where you're like, I think I like this person? Well, that time, jump in. And oh, by the way, when they fuck you, don't think that that's how it always, see, Gary, you're a fucking asshole. You made me trust this person, they fucked me. No, no, do it again. Again. It's fucking practice. It's, uh, I'm like the opposite of Allen Iverson. Uh, Alan Iverson is like practice fuck practice I'm like no no everything is practice That's and obviously so good. I loved his point and I love my point which is like you want to grow intuition you have to jump in all ha- two feet into your intuition every time you can recognize that your intuition is telling you to go even though your brain's telling you to know if you can balance your stomach with your brain you will be a fucking monster yep. and most people either are too delusional and just use their stomach and they're always getting fucked over because they're not using their fucking brain 
or like most people I see, they're just using their brain and they've been taught and have learned how to completely shut down their intuition and so they're one dimensional and everything's very linear. The one thing I've learned since COVID um, was meditation. And Love I've that. actually started to do that. I don't do it's it as nice. much as I probably should to get still, there's to get no, clear. There's, brother, there's no should. Well, there's some people that meditate every day. There's some people. But that I know that it works. Every time I meditate, I feel so much better. Well, then, I get, you, I get, then you should. I, I get super well, still. I get, I get super it, still. Let's talk about this for the last few seconds. Fuck. Like, you should meditate every day. When I hear, I feel so much better, you need to hear yourself and rewind this and clip this with your, Cody, you like, really understand. No, no, no. Do you shower every day? Yeah. Okay. You should meditate every day. Because guess what? And it, I bet you, like most dudes, somewhere in sixth, seventh, or eighth grade, even though your mom was, or someone, or the world, or somebody said you stunk and you knew you had a shower every day, you still weren't. We weren't in practice yet. I remember being in fucking eighth grade and like, you know, that's when it's like starts to get to real with the girls and everything. And I'm like, I don't want to fucking shower. I would go three days without showering. And then somewhere in, I think between freshman year of high, around freshman year, high school is a whole new world. You know, I think high school is when I started to. Well, guess what? If you can shower every day, you can definitely meditate every day. Have you? Because dudes you, don't want to shower. Have you, have you, went <laughs> out, have you had any experiences that were like longer um, that, that gives you that vision, right? Because I know that I've had experiences where like I'll meditate or I'll go somewhere for like a day or two to get clear visions. So that way I can figure out what I want to do in the future. Um, so that way I can start practicing and not. Is there anything that you do that's I, really worked look, to create a bigger vision? I don't, yeah, but I think this is really rough. I always, I kind of, because I think this is, I, I think I'm in some sort of like advanced state. That's what I, you are. I feel like I'm meditating and thinking and being thoughtful every second. I even said to Dustin fucking yesterday, that I had this weird revelation the last month that I think I'm thinking fully at night. And I'd never, like, like I had this like weird... Like conscious. What's up? Yeah, like while I'm sleeping. Yeah. Like, I had this weird thing happen twice now in the last month. I feel like something's getting to the front of my head from the back of my head where, like, I never remember anything. None of my dreams. None of my everything. And, like, two times now in the last three weeks, I feel like I've got an answer to something and I can recall thinking about it when I was sleeping. Yeah. Because I think I deep sleep. So I think a lot of people light sleep and like so they can remember a lot of shit because they're like half in and half out. I'm like out. I think your ability to be present, like you're so present. Like for everyone, the, the people that don't really know you and they think, oh, he's just all over the places on social media. Like every time I've been around you, it is amazing how like... Locked in. And I think that that leads to when you brush your head at night, you're able to like be so clear because you're, you're not worrying about the future, you're not worrying about the past, I think that that helps yeah. drive that brain a little to bit. To answer your right. question, um, it, I just think I'm meditating, some version of meditation at all times. I'm always trying to be thoughtful, I'm always trying to be in the middle, I'm not trying to let my, like I just have a good relationship with myself, and that's what I, I want people to love themselves, because I think the things that I watch trigger everyone around me is a co- direct correlation to their relationship with themselves. As this information gets more mainstream, right, and it gets yeah. out there, yeah. I even heard you talk about the subject of like psychedelics. Yes. Right? What are your thoughts on like psychedelics? Like, um, I think they're and hum- unlocking human yeah. potential. I, like, because I, I think it's, it's huge. I think it's huge. I'm not educated, but in my gut, in my intuition, <laughs> do I believe that there are a lot of people today who that same exact type of person, let just actually, if that same person was born 30 years later and everything was the same, that when the world accepts psych- micro dosing and things of that nature, that those people would be able to use that medicine the way many people today live much longer because we have modern medicine. Like, you know, there used to not be penicillin. And then there was. Do I believe stuff that's from the earth, managed properly in the right dosage, could have a humongous impact on many people around the world? Yes, I do. Do I know anything past that? Not really. I've watched a couple docs here. I've listened to my psychedelic friends. Hey, well, the day after VCon, we go on an experience. But I think of it. Because I think you'd be the best guy in the world. Listen, because you're, you're already. What, you're you know already what, but you know what there. the problem is? I'm actually, I'm actually fearful of a lot of things because I'm so happy. I'm like, what if it fucking tweaks me the other way? Oh, that's true too. Yeah. So one of the reasons I've kind of so stayed, you do have a little fear. That's good. We have healthy listen, fear. I have, I have huge fear of the health and wellness of my family, and I have huge fear of doing something that would change the trajectory of my happiness why would i do that all right i gotta get out of here well i got a question yeah last one um we've had the opportunity to interact now yes thankfully because of the v friends community yes a a lot more hangout hot talk yes meeting you in person a bunch of different times what has been your impression of me in those interactions and what do you think about me i believe that 
you kind of took my thunder in the beginning of this. I believe that your natural DNA, if you grew up the same exact way, because it's not just my mom, it's my mom, it's 1980s New Jersey America. You know, I grew up outside eight, 10 hours a day, starting at seven to 14. My mom didn't have a fucking clue where I was. She knew I was in a general area. But like, I believe that if you grew up that you, everything that is you, but you lived my exact life, born in Belarus, to everything the same, that, that we would have a lot of similarities, and I think that attracts me to you. But I don't believe that's what happened to you. And so, as you can imagine, you stole my thunder because I do believe what I'm attracted to is the people that I want to affect by what I am as a byproduct of how it happened in a positive way because I have so much positivity to give. And it's fun to watch the micro-dosing that I'm putting into people that's moving them down the path. And I believe the far majority of them that have been pot committed to it are better than they are happier, not better, are happier today than the day before they found me. And I'm proud of that. What do you think about me, though, personally? I'm curious about your, I like... I think you're a, for, a, a tour de force, that you're, you're chaotic, and that you're going to hone it the way I have, and I think that you're very entrepreneurial, I think you're a big personality, and I think when it's too much, it's not good, and when it's not enough, it's not good, and so you have red and blue moments, way more red and blue moments than I have, but that you're on your path to purple. I like that. Does that make sense? Uh, it does make sense. I really appreciate I think you have two, way more black. I, I use red and blue because of politics. And I talk about purple a lot, but let's use the other one. I think you have way more day-to-day interactions and moments in your life that are either black or white, and I believe I'm constantly gray, and I believe that, and I'm, and I believe that you are getting more gray literally every six months that I see you, and I think that will lead you to the place that you can sense you're on. I'm really excited about the new announcement. Uh, yeah, yes, LA's, LA's going to be fun. LA's going to be cool. And it's going to be different. Yeah. You know, we've taken over Minnesota and Indianapolis. We're trying something different. Yeah. We're going, we're, we're, even when you see some of the details come out, we're going to let the V Friends play a little bit in the big city. And so we'll see what that feels like and we'll learn from that. I really appreciate the time today. Everybody knows how to get a hold of Gary if they need to. I don't need to do that on this part of the podcast. If you guys got value out of this podcast, like, subscribe, comment. Leave a comment for this man. <laughs> like, give him feedback on his interviewing style so that he can build because he'll value it. What's and one question you. I should have asked you that I didn't? How, how devastated are you that the Jets season's a piece of shit after it was supposed to be so good? I'm a Browns fan, so like... It's Yours like, is going well. Yeah, Chubby. Yours is going well. Wow. Well, I know the Chubb thing hurts, but yours Chubb. is still going well. Chubb's up. You got a lot of stuff. Yeah. QB right. is different well, than RB. Thanks. All right, love you.